Hello everyone, welcome back to Z Physics. Today we're going to be talking about geostationary orbits of satellites. Now, what is a geostationary orbit? The clue is in the name in this case. Geo actually means Earth. So it's a orbit which is stationary with respect to the Earth or with respect to a different planet. For example, if we send an orbiter towards on Mars or different planets, etc. But anyways, I digress. So in order to make the orbit appear stationary to an observer on the planet, we need to satisfy the following three conditions. Number one, the orbital time period is 24 hours. Well, if it's not, then the satellite will be continuously overtaking the Earth if it's higher, or the Earth will be moving quicker if it's not. However, it will appear to be fixed in the sky only if the orbital time period is 24 hours. This means that this face of the satellite will always be facing exactly the same point on the Earth. The second condition that we need to satisfy is that the orbit needs to be in the same direction as the Earth's orbit. If that's not the case, well, this is not going to be a geostationary orbit. The final condition is that it has to be an equatorial orbit. So the orbit needs to be centered on the equator. For example, if our orbit was at an angle, uh, let's draw a couple of different possibilities. Uh, let's say that our orbit was, let's say, around here. Well, this the position of this satellite will be changing continuously to, to an observer on the Earth. And it cannot be polar as well for exactly the, the same reasons. I'm going to go into uh, the equatorial orbit in a bit more depth in one of my future videos. So please stay put for that. Okay, well, how high does a satellite need to be in order to be in a geostationary orbit? Let's calculate the typical height of a geostationary orbit. Okay, folks, so let's calculate the height of a geostationary orbit. This will be a perfect opportunity for you guys to pause this video and calculate the height of a geostationary orbit. Okay, now assuming you guys have uh, done this already, let's go through the solution and check your work. The first thing we need to do is actually just simply write down Kepler's third law. So remember Kepler's third law says that the square of the time period is proportional to the orbital distance. The constant proportionality in this case is just 4 pi squared divided by gm. In this case, m will be the mass of the Earth, g is the gravitational constant, 4 pi squared is, well, 4 pi squared, r cube is the orbital distance, and t squared is the orbital period. Because r in this case, and this is actually a tricky little uh, detail we need to watch out for, is that r is the distance from the satellite to the center of the Earth. So after we find R, we're going to need to take away the radius of the Earth, which is this distance here. But more on that later. Let's first of all just rearrange for R. So first thing I'm going to rearrange for R cubed. So R cubed is going to equal to T squared multiplied by GM. And then I'm going to bring the 4 pi squared underneath the fraction, like so. So divided by 4 pi squared, oops, let's get rid of that, divided by 4 pi squared. Okay, well, um, now um, we need to take the cube root of all of this. So this is going to equal to the cube root of t squared times gm divided by 4 pi squared. Now, we know what the orbital time period is because in this case, we are talking about a geostationary orbit. So remember, geostationary means that our time period T is equal to 24 hours. Now, please remember that any time we are working in physics, we would need to be using SI units. So 24 hours in seconds will just be 24 
times 60 times 60. And because here we have t squared, I'm just going to square all of this like so. Okay, well, let's start putting in some numbers into our formula over here for our formula for r. And we're going to get that r is going to equal to the cube root of t squared. Remember, the time period is just 24 times 60 times 60. Then all of this is squared. Our gravitational constant g is 6.67 times 10 to the power of minus 11. I'm not good enough enough space. Let's do that. And the mass of the Earth is we're assuming it to be 6.0 times 10 to the power of 24 kilograms. I'm going to need to divide this expression by 4 pi squared as well. 4 pi squared. And then I'm going to need you guys to carefully put this in to input this into your calculator. Not forgetting that you are not square rooting in this case, but you are cube rooting. This is one of the most common mistakes in calculating the height above the center of the Earth for a geostationary satellite. And if we put uh, this expression into our scientific calculator, up to two significant figures, we're going to get 4.2 times 10 to the power of 7 meters. Now, this over here is our distance r. However, remember, our height h is actually going to be found by taking this whole distance r and taking away. So r is essentially from here all the way to there. I'm going to take away the radius of the Earth, which uh, is 6,400 kilometers. So in other words, in order to find h, like so, uh, let me just write that, h, our height ab uh, above the surface, will just be equal to 4.2 times 10 to the 7. Take away the radius of the Earth, which is 6,400 kilometers. Remember, kilo stands for 10 to the 3, so that's 6,400 times 10 to the 3, or 6.4 times 10 to the power of 6. And if we put that into a calculator, or if you're good with mental maths, we can calculate that the height above the surface is approximately equal to 3.5 times 10 to the 7 meters. And this is the height at which a geostationary satellite needs to be placed. And we've calculated that using Kepler's third law. Hey folks, so hopefully geostationary orbits now make sense. If there are any questions, please feel free to drop a comment and please consider subscribing. Thank you very much.